get set for another refreshing look at Major League Baseball. Style and grace. Intricate teamwork. Head-to-head -head competition. Clutch performances. Sparkling defense. Rookies with power. And rookies with speed. Headlines and highlights coming up next on This Week in Baseball. In the American League West, a tight four-team race has been blasted wide open by the Kansas City Royals. They just haven't been letting anything get by them. Recently, KC has been the hottest team in all baseball, streaking at an unbelievable September pace. Come October, they may be too hot for anyone to handle. say about a team that wins 12 in a row and 23 of 26 ball games. Yes, the Royals are roaring toward a repeat of their 1976 divisional title. Meanwhile, the Boston Red Sox are in a sizzling three-way struggle to represent the American League East in the October Championship Series. Behind the blazing bat of Carlton Fisk, the Red Sox were off on another winning streak. Fisk hit over 600 for the week, drove in 17 runs and won five-game stretch. Four RBIs came on this grand slam homer. Carlton and the Sox feel they were ready for their two big showdowns with the Yankees. Five games with standing room only, which figured to draw nearly a quarter of a million people. With all the talk about the Yankee Red Sox rivalry, they're keeping a weather eye cocked on a third team in that Eastern Division scramble, the Baltimore Orioles. Just ask manager Earl Weaver. He'll remind you that his Orioles have won their division five of the last eight years. One reason has always been Jim Palmer, who in this year's stretch run is looking very much like the Oriole ace of old. He started fast this year, slowed down after the All-Star game, but now he's back in the groove. And lest anyone forget, Rudy May is having his most successful season. This week, he pitched his fourth shutout for one win and followed that with a two-hit victory. Oriole pitching has been consistent all year. And lately, Baltimore bats have been especially boisterous, featuring Ken Singleton, who keeps getting better and better. He now has the best on-base percentage in baseball. Counting hits and walks, Singleton has reached base 44% of the time. And for the last six weeks, He's been hitting over 400. Yes, Ken Singleton has been the Orioles' main man. And there are others also doing what it takes to win, like switch hitting Eddie Murray. Watch him now. Here's the pitch. He connects. And there it goes. One of Murray's 21 home runs. Surprisingly, during September, the Orioles have been scoring runs at a pace equal to the Red Sox and Yankees. 
third baseman Doug DeSensei has been accounting for his share of those runs. Here he rips one to center and sends two more Orioles homeward bound. Baltimore just seems to share heroics from day to day. There's no telling which one of Weaver's birds will get the worm next. How about Terry Crowley? Pinch hitting with his team down, bases loaded, he connects, and there goes a long drive, going, going, and it is gone. How about that? A grand slammer. Like we said, you just don't know which Oriole will hurt you next. Yes, while the Yankees and Red Sox fight it out, the birds look forward to six games with Boston and a good shot at grabbing their sixth divisional title in the last nine years. The way things are going, chances are slim that anyone will knock the Philadelphia Phillies off the top perch in the National League East. They just go right on gunning down the opposition. Greg Lezinski, the bull, keeps leading the Philadelphia pennant charge. Just watch him muscle this one right out of here. Ole! The Bull is headed for his best home run in RBI season ever. And like his team, is gaining momentum for some big dates in October. Meanwhile, the Pittsburgh Pirates keep scrambling to stay alive, but time is getting short. They fought the Phillies in some tough battles this week, going all out despite the Phil's almost insurmountable lead. The Bucks are still scrapping. Just watch first baseman Bill Robinson on this play. Man alive. And on this play, keep an eye on second baseman Phil Garner. Back in August, before the Phils broke away, this was a tight three team race. At that time, Phil Garner told us what he thought would make the difference in the stretch run. I think uh, the team that gets the breaks uh, injury wise is going to be the team uh, with, with uh, fewer injuries to key personnel is going to be the team that perseveres. Injuries did seem to take their toll. Reliever Bruce Souter was disabled and the Cubs faded. Souter had been the most sensational relief pitcher in baseball at the time. Pittsburgh suffered key losses too. Willie Stargell, veteran pirate slugger and team leader, has been hurt the second half of the year. This early season blast was Willie's 400th career homer. And if you're wondering what the 36 year old Stargell means to the Pirates, just ask 23 year old pitching ace John Candelaria. Willie Stargell, he's, he's the greatest man I ever met. He's. I never thought a superstar was like that. You know, some of those guys are. Or on their own little ego trips but Willie Stargell I hope someday I'm the kind of a man he is. And few young pitchers are the kind that you are John. Although plagued with back problems the candy man has been brilliant. Yeah I don't even think I've really scratched the surface yet of my ability. I, I, I'm just starting to know my hitters and I'm starting to pitch more with my head now and I want to see the day that John Candelaria puts it all together. Just curious to see what he can do. The most critical blow to the Pirates was the loss of second baseman Rennie Stump, the league's number two hitter, when forced out with a broken hand. The Bucks brought up rookie Dale Barra to play third base, and they moved Phil Garner to second. The son of the great Yogi Barra got a taste of big league glory with this game-winning base hit against the Phillies. But all the same, it may have come too late in the pennant race. Incidentally, Barra happens to be one fine sapling in a field of talented rookies that have sprung up this year. Let's take a look at some of the new faces. Here's Atlanta's Barry Bunnell, who often seems to play center field with the aid of wings. Just watch him reach for the stars on this play. Will Bunnell grab National League Rookie of the Year honors? Well, he's a contender. He can play both the infield and outfield, and he's hitting close to 300. Here he brings home Pat Rocket, another highly touted Braves rookie.
And here's San Diego's Gene Richards at bat. He shows power. It's over the fence. But Richards is known primarily for his base stealing ability. He's a good bet to steal 50 in this, his rookie season. New York Steve Henderson is another rookie who has to be watched closely on the bases. Just take a look. Yes, Henderson will really hurt you on the bases. Not only that, he'll hurt you at the plate. Since joining the Mets in the Tom Seaver trade, he's been the club's biggest bat. He's hitting over 300. Shows both good power and the ability to hit in the clutch. Right now, the Mets are basing their future on Steve Henderson. Warren Cromartie is one of two exciting rookie outfielders for the Expos. The Montreal left fielder has been a tough out all season and is among the league leaders in doubles. Center fielder Andre Dawson can do everything. Field, run, hit. All in all, the choice for Rookie of the Year in the National League won't be easy. Bump wills is one reason competition in the American League might be even tougher. A leading candidate for rookie honors, he's clearly the favorite son in Texas. And any son of Maury Wills has much to live up to but Bumps proved he can make a name for himself. He's batting 280, fielding brilliantly, even stealing a few bases, just to maintain a little family tradition. We've been talking about Baltimore's Eddie Murray all year, mainly because he keeps getting the big hits that win ball games. The young switch hitter has plenty of power, and although not yet a 300 hitter, he's been one of the big reasons why Baltimore is still in the pennant race. Rookie Bob Baylor is the keystone of future pennant hopes in Toronto. His consistent 320 average is one of the league's best, proving that the Blue Jays were really on the ball when they made him their first pick in the expansion draft. Rupert Jones was Seattle's first pick, and he's put on quite a show in his rookie season. He combines speed and power. Already 23 homers and counting. This drive shows you his power. It's off the center field wall. Now watch Rupert turn on the speed to pick up another homer. And this one is an inside the parker. But when it comes to speed and power, few rookies have ever had it like Mitchell Page. He's become one of the finest base dealers in the game. Already set a league record of 26 straight steals. And he wields a dangerous bat, one that combines a 300 average with power and heavy RBI production. The A's built one dynasty around a young player by the name of Reggie Jackson, and they hope to build another around Mitchell Page. Rookie Steve Kemp is one reason why Tiger manager Ralph Pouch is brimming with confidence about Detroit's future. The former USC star has made it big in a hurry with over 80 RBIs. Last year, Mark Fidrich was the overwhelming choice for Rookie of the Year. This year, the Tigers' 15-game winner, Dave Rosema, could grab the honor. League competition is tough, which makes it really hard to pick a winner when so many talented rookies arrive together. And now let's cool it down and check out some scenes seen around the major leagues this week. First off, dig these wild birds, hanging out in the Baltimore bullpen. Rock and roll is here to stay. Rick Dempsey, ladies and gentlemen, on lead back. And here's my friend White Sox broadcaster, Harry Carey, just reeling with the feeling. Holy cow. It's happening on the ball field, too. Fred Lynn and Bernie Carbo do the Boston bump. Now this dance is really out of step. Call it a precision collision. Base runner, the fielder, to umpire. What a combination shot. Baseball's a rough and tumble business. The catcher has him hung up. But wait a minute, who's hung up? 
Maybe the third baseman. He took the throw, but nobody's there. Coming down to earth, Yankee slugger Cliff Johnson hits the deck for a strike one count. Don't worry about it, baby. You got two more rounds. Those Bronx Bombers are famous for swinging from their heels. Of course, you can't always get it all together. Just watch this. A super swing from Lou Pinella, a mighty nice fella. Hey, Lou, if you don't mind, we just have to see that one more time. Psychologists will never divine man's inner thoughts during moments like this. Here's some quick thinking. Greg Nettle sees where he's headed and says, oh, forget it. Greg happens to be one of the best third basemen in the world, but watch him here. He drifts under a pop-up and yells, I got it. Where's the ball? Not even the camera is sure, but there it is, just a routine pop to the shortstop. Chicago's Jim Spencer is also not answering any questions. Let's take a look at what he'd rather forget. An infield pop-up. Who's gonna take it? No one volunteers, so Spencer tries. Watch him. And it pops out. And the catcher tries to grab it with his mask. Unfortunately, there's no masking an error like that. In another case, Minnesota's Dan Ford can't figure out what he did wrong. He doesn't know it, but he's out. Just watch the play coming up. There's a line drive to left field that looks like a hit. Ford takes off from first, not knowing the ball will be caught until he reaches second. Now look at him. He fails to retouch second on his way back to first. Rules are rules. When you go back, you have to retag every base you touched. And there's Rod Carew explaining the facts of life to his younger teammates. How about that? <laughs> and here's one that no one can miss, though Gary Maddox won't easily believe it. Generous offerings from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Says Gary, don't show me a scorecard, just score me the run. On a more inspiring note, for the man on, Fred Pottick bunts. Jim Palmer lets it drop. Throws to first, but runner Daryl Porter never went to second. That doesn't bother the umpire, but it does bother the Orioles. They're saying after all the ball dropped, the runner is forced to go to second. We tagged him, so it must be a double play. But the umpire claims he's fine right where he is. And he's right. Here's why. As the throw comes to first, Porter alertly waits for the batter to be out, then quickly steps back before the tag, removing the force. Thus, he's safe. That's using baseball know-how. Now let's see some players use their exciting talent. Dwayne Kuyper shows it at second base. The ball couldn't be hit any harder, but he still backhands it. How about that? No age limit on Carl Yastrzemski's talent. Watch him go down the line for this one, like sitting down for a picnic. Unbelievable. Here's a drive to another left fielder, Minnesota's Lyman Bostock. Good timing, Lyman. But number one this week on the defensive charts is California's Don Baylor. Take a look. Wow! That one deserves a big round of applause. Speaking of applause, Toronto's Roy Howell sure earned a huge round of it for an amazing performance at Yankee Stadium this week. He had a fantastic day, a day to remember as he drove in a huge flock of Blue Jays. The Gillette Special this week goes to Roy for accomplishing in one game 
what most players can't do in a week or more. Yankee pitchers had to wish he had never come to the ballpark. Watch this. Deep to right. It's going, going, and it is gone. While Toronto won a 19 to 3 shocker from the Yankees, Howell drove in nine runs, only three short of the Major League record. In addition, Roy's bat helped the expansion Blue Jays give the Yankees their worst clobbering at the stadium since 1925. Well, that's life in the world of baseball, and about all you can ever expect is the unexpected. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>